Ooh, what's up? What's happening? Welcome to another edition of the Short Porch presented by Barstool Sports. I'm your host, Hubs. On the other side of the laptop, he's at the Barstool office right now. Tommy Smokes, Tommy Billy, Noah on the ones and twos. Marty is traveling the globe. Barstool America is in full gear here. Um, so he'll be back for hopefully. I don't know what we're going to do actually for this next episode because we're all going to be disarray here. But for now, we're here, me and Tommy. The Yankees just finished off a sweep of their homestand. They're 13-6. and six. They're in first place in the American League East, sole possession of first place. They beat the bad teams. They swept the Orioles. This is exactly what you need to do. This is shit they didn't do last year. Um, what was their start? Their, la- their start last year, they were below 500 at this point. I want to say they were, were like 6-11 and 11 or something. They were 11-13 and 13, um, on this day last year, obviously like with the, slow, the delayed start. We were playing less games, but they were fourth in division last year. At this point, 11 and 13, 13, six this time, first place in the AL East, sweeping uh, the Baltimore Warriors, a terrible baseball team that it's almost like insane that like they lost the series to these same group of people a couple weeks ago. But it's in the past. They're on a roll right now. The hitting has seemingly caught up to the pitching, which is very nice to see. They're putting up a ton of runs. I'm happy. How can you not be? Yeah. This is how we should feel after a series with the Orioles. Like, like it was like doomsday. We were so down after the one in uh, Camden where they uh, lost two out of three and rightfully so now, I mean, six straight wins. Like I feel like last season, the Yankees, they didn't do this. They didn't beat bad teams as consistently as they just did six straight wins again. And they should, they should win, you know, five or six games. And when you have a six game stretch against the guardians and the Orioles and everybody's looked good. The pitching has been good for the most part. The bullpen, you know, hitting Aaron Judge is entering one of those God modes. Anthony Rizzo is the king of the short porch. I mean, and DJ LeMay, who is completely back in 2019, 2020 form, like everything is clicking on all cylinders right now. Yeah, it's I, Marinaccio just fucking up the whole team's ERA there. Uh, He's but, he I he's in danger of losing that pinstripe, but I'm not going to take it away from. Him. I think I'll always let Ron Marinaccio have that pinstripe. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Judge. His last six games, 375 batting average, four homers, eight RBIs, eight runs scored. Pretty good, um, especially with he had a rather slow start. Um, I guess the whole team kind of did. You mentioned Rizzo. Stanton's finding the ball again. He's putting bat on the ball, hitting the ball, finding holes, better swings. Um, yeah, I mean, it, people, I think I saw somebody, uh, you might want to get on this guy. I it came across my, when I was on the short porch tweeting, um, someone Rugi or whatever was like, the Yankees are seven and one or whatever since uh, one Barstool employee declared them dead. So you might want to go after I that guy. De- I never declared them dead. I said that they looked horrible after the Boston series. Uh, I, and I stand by that assessment. Or sorry, after the Baltimore series. I. Yeah, and and the way they lost that final uh, game in Detroit to not get the sweep was pitiful. Uh, the offense it was you know looked like last year. And to be fair, let's pump the brakes here. It's awesome, the, and we were going to talk about everything that went on in the series, and it was all good things for the most part. You're, you're beating up on the Guardians and the Orioles, like that. You need to beat up on these teams. We, we talk about it at nauseum to win the AL East. You need to beat up on the Baltimore Orioles. You have to do what you just did, but like, and you have to do this with the schedule in front of you. You got to beat who you play, but they got, they got, they're eventually going to have to play. You're going to have to go to Toronto in like a week. Like we'll see how they do there. Let's not like get ahead of ourselves too much as much as like, we like to do that here. Um, but because just what I'm saying is we're beating up on bad teams, but there's a, good teams out there we need to play to prove ourselves like okay this is different is what i'm trying to say Do yeah no, i agree like I, I i am very happy with the way the yankees are playing there's truly nothing to be negative about you understand there's nothing to be negative about i'm also keeping things in perspective of this in the sense of like i'm not overreacting and being like you know we're going to the world series because we just swept the orioles and the guardians it's great right now and i, I love the way everybody's hitting and the pit to me the pitching is I have more reason reason for optimism about this team because of the pitching. Like, yeah, the pitching to me, I really think could be at the worst, like a top three, top to bottom staff in baseball. My concern with this team 
will always be the hitting and that I'm afraid they're going to, you know, in a big spot, maybe not hit the best pitching in the world that, you know, they, they, they're hitting the ball incredibly well this week. And today the, uh, they had their big inning. Like it was a lot of like base hits. I mean, some errors helped too, but you know, I love those type of innings where it's just like rallies like that, as opposed to the home runs, but I'm optimistic. I'm still, I, I feel good about what just happened. I'm still, you know, let let's keep grounded. Let's stay grounded a little bit where I, yeah. I'm not ready to be like, you know, this team's going to the world series. No, you're, you're right. Uh, we talked about, you, you mentioned that inning and I thought that inning was so nice to see it. Honestly, today felt like, so obviously they're down to nothing in that fifth inning. Um, Tyone isn't able to get through five. I didn't think he was bad today. Um, I didn't think he was great. You know, he was just somewhere in between, but still like getting four and two thirds, you know, on a bad day, tech, you know, like on a, on an off day from your starter and he only gives up two runs. Like you take that. And with the bullpen, the way it is, you trust that. And that's what happened the rest of the way until they got to Marinaccio, you know, green, Loise, and Peralta and Castro are really good backing up uh, Tyone there. But that, that one inning you're referring to, yeah, it was kind of like a sigh of relief. Um, the way they, they manufactured it, the Castro reaches on an error by Gutierrez, kind of a bad, I feel like they could have just given him Castro the hit. There it was a tough play. Uh, Marwin doubles him home. LaCastro uses his speed to get around the bases there easily. Um, good send by Luis Rojas. Um, LeMay who reaches on another error. This was a real error. That was bad. Um, DJ, I'm sorry. Then judge singles him home. Rizzo singles him home. Uh, Stan RBS, just three straight RBI singles. And all of a sudden they're winning four to two. And it's like, wow, this is, that was awesome. The way they just did that, you know, like to score without the home run ball, you know, you're always gonna need the home run and they did get it later with judge, but um, it's nice when you can manufacture an inning kind of like that towards the bottom of your lineup too, where you have, you know, um, like cast this, you know, seven, eight, nine, wasn't really Higgy there, but you know, the seven, eight really producing there, get you on the board, sets the table for the top. Beautiful thing to see. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and you look at almost like yeah, eyeball, like I know batting average is so obsolete, but like they do matter to it's some not extent. Obsolete. I mean, batting average is not obsolete. Don't be okay. That, that's not the right word, but they're not like the most important thing, but still seeing that top three of DJ three thirteen, judge two ninety six, Rizzo two ninety. looks awesome. nice. Yeah, like I, I just want to scroll through these box scores. Like it, it looks the the two forty three one ninety seven is tough. Then Joey Gallo still stinks. I don't care that he had two home runs, but the top three. I, we said it last episode. Like DJ Mayhew, Aaron Judge, and and Anthony Rizzo is got to be maybe the top, the best one two three lineup in baseball. It's especially with DJ swinging a comfortable bat like he is. You even see him in the field, DJ. Like just like the plays he made a third last night were beautiful. Um, he's just, and, and today, uh, taking advantage of the, you know, the shitty play and left and, and getting the second there, just a way different player when that man is healthy and fuck all the nerds that just say like, Oh, he can't hit outside Colorado and the juice balls thing, blah, blah, blah. Fuck you. Um, so Thursday was enjoyable. Uh, it is really crazy to see how bad this Orioles team is. They made five errors and then was a wild piss thrown in there too. They're horrific. They're just a, hor- it's, it's deplorable. This team lost. Uh, a series to them, but we're trying to move past it. But I they're mean, a quadruple A team. They really are. They're they're really really bad. They, like if it. they played in triple A, if they played a hundred games in triple A, I think they might win like sixty, which is bad at sports. Kind of pathetic. Bad at what? Sports. They're very yeah. bad at sports. The sport of baseball specifically. Correct, but but like but probably better at the sport of baseball than they are at other sports. Yeah, I would assume they're also going to be bad at other professional sports. So right. I mean, I'm probably, they'd it. probably be really bad if they were in the NFL. They'd be horrible. Or the NBA. Horrible. Although Cedric Mullins, I could see, is a really good scat back, but yeah. everywhere else, bad. Slot receiver. Yeah, bad. Trey Mancini is the slowest guy in the world. The fact that Gallo he could be a quarterback. Him. He could be a pocket quarterback, Trey Mancini. Maybe, but you can't really ask Trey to like. He's just stuck in the mud out there. He's not going to be able to get you any yards, like when the pocket breaks down. Yeah. He's um, like Ben Roethlisberger last year, like sure. just just a skeleton back there. Sure. Um, talk that quickly. Would be a, a fun mm-hmm. segment to do one time is like, you know, how who would who? I feel like maybe we've done this before, but who are the Yankees' quarterback and all their? Positions? We definitely have done this before. Yeah, uh, team change. Granted, it's definitely a different team. So yeah, on, on a on a rainy day, maybe we can talk that over. But. Um, Let's talk the other days before we talk about the other, you know, good, good series, good sweep. Just nice to see. Uh, before we do that, I want to talk about our friends over at Cuts Clothing. We love Cuts Clothing. We talk about Got that. It on right now. Got Cuts Clothing on right now. Of course. You're out and about. No brainer. 
You look the part. You look like you know what you're doing because you do know what you're doing. Cuts Clothing uh, designs premium minimalistic menswear that is both simple and sophisticated men's apparel. You can be proud to wear anytime, anywhere. They make the most premium t-shirts that can be worn anywhere on or off the clock. They also dabble in other stuff too. They've got hoodies. They've got crewnecks, Henleys, you name it. They've got, they've got pants now too. Um, I don't think I was able to get my hands on those when they sent those, but you guys got them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also yeah. great. Just comfortable. Com- like cuts is comfortable and cool. I don't know if that's their official slogan, but like you have two. If I want to wear a shirt, I like to, especially in the winter, I like it to be comfortable enough where I could wear it under a hoodie, like so that it's not rubbing against my nipples or anything. And I also like it so that I could just go out wearing just this. It really is versed. I wore fr- or Friday night, I went out to a bar, wore a cut shirt. I wore that maroon one with no buttons today, just chilling at work, I'm chilling around my apartment. It really, it almost doesn't make sense how it's so versatile. Have you ever been a person to wear a hoodie without an undershirt under it? Because apparently that's a thing. Like, I know KFC Radio was talking about that. I think he's the only one that does that. I've never really, like, even thought about doing that. It's crazy to me. Also, Um, then I wouldn't, like, a good thing about hoodies, if you're wearing stuff underneath these, you can wear them multiple times. Whereas, like, I wouldn't want to do that if I just was, like, sweating into it all day. Right. Um, Yeah, no, like you said, though, when I go out, like, I just wear cuts. It's I just have, I have six or seven of them. They're always ready and clean and uh, they don't get wrinkled. Don't have to worry about that and just wear them out. No brainer. Um, so you can head over to cutsclothing.com slash porch. You're going to get 15% off your first order uh, by going to cutsclothing.com slash porch. You see for yourself why cuts is the one of the fastest growing men's band, men's brands with over a million shirts sold. Once again, cuts clothing, C U T S clothing.com slash Slash porch gets you 15% off your first order. Um, the rest of the series here. So we'll start from the Tuesday. Severino was good again. Um, just so nice to see him healthy. The changeup is disgusting. Um, but the story of the whole game was Anthony Rizzo. This man, and obviously you're all you're gonna get all those people like, oh, this was a homer in one of 30 stadiums, and I just can't stand the same those stadium the Orioles played on that night. Yeah. Yep, they could just do this very same thing. Um, three homers, two of them were – one of them was just hilarious where he he thinks it's foul and, he, and the wind just pushes it over right to the right to the left side of the fair pole and, uh, and it's gone. And it's his first three-run home game of his career, of his big league career. And just his look on his face, just in pure disbelief. He's I think he mouths, oh, my God, holy shit. Like, <laughs> this is – like – just hilarious, but the man was really built for you. It's about time, man. We have big lefty power hitters that can take advantage of the fucking short porch and right field that the stadium was built around. The fact that like they kind of did that initially with obviously bringing in like a Mark Teixeira, the switch hitting Teixeira, and you know um, Damon Matsui, right? Like they did it Swisher, initially, and then they they won the World Canel. Series and they went away from it. They like stopped. Crazy. It is crazy that like. That's always been a classic Yankee thing to have great lefties and like or we're talking old back to like fucking Babe Ruth or even right. like, you know, it's recent. The guys were listing Jason Giambi before that, Tino, Paul O'Neill, like just have always won when you've had good lefties. And then for some reason, we just were like, all right, now we just have big right. It's like it was just Judge Stanton, Boyd, Glaber, like some of those guys are still around, but like just so, so righty. We, we still need Gary, that. like Gary. Yeah. Oh. It just at nausea. They were just we have. To, it was like ten years of just why? Why are we doing this? Just go back to what works. So they did. And Anthony Rizzo is perfect. He's perfect for Yankee Stadium. He's a great fielder. He's great in the clubhouse. He's the perfect swing. And you really think about like how he played in Wrigley his whole life there, and you know that that part for lefties is not great. You know, right field is not an easy is not is not a you know a fun day out there. You know, trying to muster it over there for a home run. Yankee Stadium is a dream for him, you know. So he's leading the league in home runs. Uh, he had another RBI That's hit so today. Cool he makes contact. There's just nothing wrong with this guy. I, I, I know absolutely it's, love him. It's another thing that doesn't really matter, but I just love looking at going to like uh, the league leaders and things and seeing a Yankee at the top. Just seeing Anthony Rizzo with eight home runs, like it just and RBIs. He's like top three. I want to say. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, he's got 19. Let's see where that is exactly. Trout's doing that thing again where he just like hits every ball out, but or an RBI. So he's gonna end up like just running away with stats again. Who? But what? Who? Trout. 
Oh, yeah, he's not he's not up there right now. Right? Jose Ramirez has 25 RBIs. Jesus. Somehow they limited him. Even if you go to uh, Rizzo's baseball savant page, all the analytics, like, he's barreling everything. Who the fuck batting. is Ty France? Ty France on the Mariners. He's He's been good for them. He's one of the re- main reasons they've wanted, like, a good amount of games here. Yeah, never heard of him. Yeah, he had a pretty good year last year, too. But, like, um, Rizzo's, like, all barrel percentage is up there, 87 percentiles, expected slugging, 95th percent. Like, you know, like, they talk about all these things with Gallo, but, like, Rizzo, like, actually makes contact. And so all these things right. are just great, and the numbers are great, too. Now, Gallo did have himself, a, you know, he got off the schneid with the home run. Um, it's it's nice. When he actually hits the home, hits the ball, and, it, like, it goes out, it's a pretty swing. It's just rarely makes like today i think we had three or four strikeouts you see what happened he, he actually I won't got be a good joey shit. what i won't be apologizing for any of my joey callow takes just no yet. because like, at the end he, of the day like it's the same you like, expect this like this is what you'd expect you, he should be hitting home runs every once in a while like he's still yeah, our point is like this just isn't what you should be going for this type of player like we right he's, he's gonna go on home run binges like he is what he does of his last 17 plate appearances or something like that like he's gonna hit some home runs He's still hitting 150 with also a low OBP. So, like, it's I, I like when he hits the random home runs, but I, I would like a more consistently hitting baseball player. Yeah, that's that's all we we're saying. Like, we get we we fully understand he's not going to go the whole year hitting five home runs. Like, he's going to get up there hopefully to 25, 30. But at the end of the day, like, is that a guy you can rely on in October? Like, is that the guy you want to play in October? And for us, the answer is no. And they should have gone in a different direction. Um, now back to Rizzo. Um, you love everything about him. So we, um, so we put on a shirt, the King of the short porch. He really is. And it kind of, you know, I, I, I think I tweeted it out or whatever, like, cause he had that iconic, like when he's just waiting to see if the ball's gone or, uh, it's foul or whatever. It's just like, it's just a great picture. Whoever took that and sent the triggs and voila, we got a great shirt out he's, in the store right now. He's so good at what he does. Triggs. Yeah. Anthony yeah. Rizzo too, but tricks trick. And he like beat his own timeline. He's like, yeah, I should have this in a day or two. I'm like, yeah, fine. He had it like in five hours. I couldn't believe how now granted it's not like football season. So he's not sketching for, you know, he's not doing crazy shirts and all that stuff. So he's kind of got some downtime, I think, but yeah, I mean, his ability to turn out shit like that is crazy. I've got another idea, something maybe to do with Nestor that we can put out maybe after his next start. Um, but this Rizzo one, I love it. Um, and uh, you should go buy it. Store it up, parcelsports.com. Search Rizzo. You're going to find it right there. Or search Short Porch, and uh, it will be there. And it's beautiful. You should own it. Hopefully, everyone has one in the stadium soon because this man is going to hit a ton of home runs this year uh, utilizing that portion right. Love it. He, I was trying, what is his career? I don't think he's ever hit 40 home runs, right? Like, he has a legit chance to hit 40 this, this year. Yeah, he's he low 30s out. for, like, a five-year stretch. Yeah, let's see. Four years. Yeah, 32 is as high as 32, 31, 32, 32. So very consistent in that. I mean, yeah, if the back holds up and he can avoid COVID again, because that's kind of what derailed the season last year. Yeah, he was just never the same player after that. If he can just, yeah, sure. Why not? Is he going to have an 1100 OPS? No, but if he has a 900 OPS, that's fantastic. It's so much fun having him on the Yankees. It's just, he's just perfect. He is. He's perfect. His personality, his smile, he's his athletic and, ability. And he really just makes you like think of like we talked about this, I think, the last few episodes, but like settling for Luke Voigt for what he gave us just because of what he was following with Chris Carter and Greg Bird. But now I mean look, we're we're, we're being hard. Luke Voigt, he did lead the league in home runs in, in 2020. Like Luke Voigt in a had 60 a game season. Wow, you have turned so much on Luke Floyd just because I'm he just saying you on Rez, Rizzo right. and him are not on different planets in my mind. I agree. Anthony Rizzo is a, is a better baseball player and he's he makes the Yankees better. I think, you know, pretending like Luke Voigt was like an absolute bum is a little unfair. To him. I didn't say bum. I didn't say bum. I'm just think oh, we were blinded by game, only let it in a 60 game season. Like he had 20 home runs in like 60 games. You know what? It's more, it was more like. What is that movie? Horrible Bosses? Or is it... No. I know my Bateman movie, so... No, wait. I want to get this right. It, Talk it's, it out. The guy's name is Coakley. Who's one? Is, it, is that Horrible Bosses? That's no, 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 no. Hall Pass. Hall Pass. 
Oh. Not Bateman. Also a good movie. Not Bateman. Sudeikis, Not Bateman. Another Sudeikis. It's when this uh, the guy uh, takes him to the bar, and he's like, um, they go to a you know they they want to go hit on these girls, and then he the old guy goes, no no no, don't do this. He goes, you're getting blinded by all the ugly. And it's like a bunch of ugly girls, and this one like average looking oh, yeah, girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he like put, does this or whatever, and they realize that girl's ugly too, and it's like actually not a bad reference for what, yeah it what took I'm us a of... while to land that plane but i do understand what you were saying yeah i for whatever reason i can only remember the character's name being coakley because it's a funny last name but um yeah that's kind of i think the situation we are with rizzo here uh we're with uh with Voight and rizzo uh but it's really nice to have uh that man moving along uh more of that game um you have the gallo homer um now I was. This is more. He looked really good today, so I'm going to kind of back off this. But Loisaga hasn't been himself today. He was. It was yeah. nice to get him back on track today. But he was. You know, he made that game interesting on Tuesday, uh, giving up the home run, and to that point, really hadn't been himself. Like he just hasn't looked lights out. And you know, he gets a pass right now because we're winning games, and the rest of the bullpen's been great. But it was a little weird. Hopefully today he kind of figured everything out. He made adjustments. That was much more like the Johnny Lasagna that we we've grown to love. So I'm gonna back off, and hopefully we're we're good for now. But I was a little yeah, concerned do, heading into today about like what's going on with Johnny. But, it's early, but there is you know it could creep into your mind where it's like oh shit. Well, he was really only that good last year. Like we've only had one really good year of Johnny Lasagna, like being a sh- pretty shut down yeah um, <laughs> late game reliever. It's not like you know he's had like a Mariano like career. It's like there's a little concern where it's all right. Let's hope last year wasn't a fluke, but I don't think it is. His stuff is so good that like, I, I still trust Johnny Lozano. I think that it's just a rough patch to start the season, the tough spring training and all Agreed. That. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I also think with pitchers and it's really crazy how good the pitchers have been. And maybe it is because the hitters are more at a disadvantage with this, but the short and spring training, like, I don't know. I didn't expect the pitchers to look this sharp and this crisp. I- I, it's so crazy to me because I really would have thought it was the opposite. I really would have thought that hitters had the advantage of the pitchers where like pitchers arms maybe weren't ramped all the way up like hitters. I don't know. They just fucking go up there and swing. No, they like, always, like, no, but you do. I know they say stories adjusting in, your eyes to live pitching, but yeah, you do always hear stories in spring training of like how guys the first week, two weeks, like, like how have I ever hit a baseball before? Yeah. So, you know, that that does play credence to like kind of this start, but I don't know. I was I'm just impressed by the whole staff. And you saw it more or less on Wednesday too. Montgomery was really good again. He has really turned into I, just a really awesome starting pitcher. I feel like this guy is awesome. I, I have him. one more thing I want to say about Severino. Oh, go. Even though this might sound dumb. I'm even though his sixth inning wasn't good, mm-hmm. I'm glad it happened. Like I'm glad he pitched the sixth inning, if that makes like I, I'd rather him finish his line with well, six. Well, no, innings. it was the it was the seventh seventh inning. Wait, well, okay, he came out for the seventh. Right, but I'm saying like I'd rather his oh okay, okay. line be like six innings, four runs, than five in. Like I don't know what I'm saying probably doesn't make any sense. But like I'm just I'm I was so tired of seeing like you see Luis Severino box score, and obviously it makes sense because he's coming back. It's like. Five innings, five innings, four and two thirds, four and a third. It was nice to see like the full six. It was even though we ended up giving four runs, it's just nice to see like all right, Luis Severino is going deep into games again. He was perfect into the fifth inning. Right, he gave up three runs though in the sixth. It, yeah, no, I know. What I'm saying, but like he started off that game. I've gotten the feeling multiple times in a game, like like the Nestor and this star. I'm like, whoa, this is this could be something. This is this could be history. This could be a moment, yeah. But and then it's all falling a little bit apart there. But yeah, Sevy just continues to look the part. I don't really care about the four runs he gave up because they were cooking by then. But uh, oh no, actually, wait, what am I saying? The four runs he gave up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They still have the lead. They they were up. That made it six three, I think, or whatever. Um, but it, no. Uh, what I was saying after that was Montgomery. I have so much trust in this guy when he starts. Like, he's he just pounds the zone. He grinds. When players make mistakes in the field behind him, he kind of just bails them out almost every time. Um, I have 
a lot, a lot of confidence in Jordan Montgomery. It's like nice to see because I feel like for so long he was too inconsistent where I now I feel like he's kind of figured that out and he is just a really good pitcher. He just really needs his run support to like help him out say, here. The but... guy though still can't get a goddamn win. Yeah. Who, who has him on our thing? Someone um, has him, I think, right? Might be me. I think it might be me. Uh, I feel like I was like, I feel like I was like, it can't happen again that he gets no run support or whatever. I don't know. Noah, do you have that sheet up for who, who will get the most wins besides Cole? Uh, let me see. Yeah, I mean, it. it uh, it's, yeah, it's Tom, you have, uh, you have Monty. Who oh, didn't Hubs choose Clay Holmes? He's got uh, one. Yes. Yeah, Hubs pick Clay Holmes. Marty has Tyon. So me and Mar- me and Marty are tied with one. All right, so I feel pretty good though. Like long term, I got Jordan Montgomery throwing his dick off. He's, yeah, but he doesn't Holmes have any... gets into a ton of games. He does, but I don't know. I think that I don't know. That's I think an advantage with a reliever. That, I get like sixty games here. <laughs> yeah, but you have less control. Sure, but also like starters don't go. You have you have to go five innings when you pitch. Yeah. Otherwise, you have no chance of a win. And then you need to get run support too. It's not as easy as you think. That's what fucked I on today. Yeah. Um, Sevy King and Miguel Castro. That's a name you wouldn't expect to have two wins right now. But those guys have all all have two wins. Fucking Miguel. It, it is kind of funny when a reliever ends up with like eleven wins or something. Yeah. It didn't we say wasn't it green last year? Uh, yeah, it Green had to one, get 10 It was one year. He, who? Yeah. Green had, I think, 10 wins last year. Yeah, there yeah, was one that... year Chad Green. No, 20. Oh, yeah, 2021, Green had 10 wins. That's absurd. 10 and 7. That's a, that's just a full-ass starting pitching like <laughs> yeah. season. Yeah. That's why – Um. oh, he did pitch well today. I was happy to see Green. Get, Green got out there. I think it was a four-run lead then. That's a good time to use Chad Green. For, yeah, I don't want to see him in one in one run games at the moment, like for the foreseeable future. But you roll him out there in a six two game, that's the good time to use him. I do can we take want a deep to breath do there. a uh, do we want to do a bullpen trust treat today? Feel like we should wait for Marty. Yeah, true. Feel like we should wait for Marty, but a sneak peek into my trust tree, Green and Loisaga at the moment would be a little towards the bottom. Loisaga, not, not I want to say that, but Green still. No, I still have Loisaga. Up there, I, I have. A, I want to say I have Loisaga in the middle of the pack. I need to see a little bit more than today, but I mean, like my top is like fucking. It's King Chapman Holmes, King Holmes Chapman, King Holmes Chapman, King and Holmes would be my top two. Holmes is fucking just. He he's boring. How good he is! <laughs> he is. He he real like we actually have. So no like and assuming the wise gets back on track, I'll, I'll include him here. Johnny Chapman, Holmes, and King could all be like good closers on other teams. Yeah, and we yeah. just no, have them in I mean, the Wandy's a guy I trust too, even though he's another guy. It's not that flashy. I just trust Wandy. Oh yeah, he's shown us nothing to like steer clear of him. Yeah. And if Green ever fucking gets his ass ahead of his ass, maybe he can too. But at the moment, I'm not doing that. Miguel Castro scares me too much. Still, I still hear he's got six walks and seven and a third. I just hear too many. I, I, you know, it's the Mets, but it's just like he was such a disaster there. I feel like he would give he's, up. He would just have implosions. That I'm like, when it, I'm watching a Miguel Castro inning, I'm like, is it happening right now? Is this about to be it? But he gets out of it. I'm like, oh, okay. Right. In like a performance tree, he's he's high. Like, and he, he might always be pretty high. But in a trust tree, in like terms of like a comfort level and a trust, watching him pitch, he's never going to be that high. Just because of it, like it's like I said, it's an Adovino where when they're good. And, and I'd almost put Chapman in there. Chapman's not uh, as extreme, but like when they're good, they're great. They're amazing. But you do have that fear of like, uh oh, they just don't have it today, and you're never going to feel totally comfortable. It's an adrenaline rush when those guys pitch. Yes, it's like doing. It's good. like if you want, if you if you ha- if your life's been a little boring, you want some excitement. Go watch those guys pitch. Yeah, maybe you're sober. Happen. Maybe you're like you, you've hung up a life of of drugs and alcohol. You're like, how yeah. can I get that high again? How can I get my fix? You watch Miguel Castro pitch. Yeah, uh, watch Miguel Castro load the bases and with two outs and try and get out of it. 
Remember David Robertson? Like the Houdini, he had the nickname Houdini. Oh yeah. Like he literally used to just, that was just his thing. Yeah. It was almost like understood. Like the first three guys are just going to get on. Right. Like, don't worry okay. about it. I'll, yeah. It's like some turbulence, just some turbulence. We'll land this plane. Yeah. Um, Stanton homered on Wednesday, 350 career homers. Percent chance he gets the 500. High. It's, it's like higher than I originally thought because I, I, I would just like, I don't know. I misjudged his age. So he's going to be 30. Is he 32 or is he about to be 32? He is 32. I mean, he's, he's signed through 2027, correct? With the team option for 20. Like, so even after this, he has five full years. He's got, yeah. Like statistically, he needs six 25 home run seasons. Yeah. Or, you know, five 30 home run seasons. I mean, the health is obviously always the issue with him, but yeah, you could just have one, one of those seasons where he hits like 45 bombs or something. Then he's well on track. 150 home runs is very doable for, I would think for him. He'd be a stone cold lock if 2019 and 2020 didn't happen. Like he had seven home runs in those two years. Right. Well, 2020 was also the COVID. I know. Bad luck, yeah. though. Like, that fucks him. So, yeah. that's just well, another year. Yeah, it was a turd. Yeah. So, like, but he still should be able to get there. Should be I would think, there. I would think right now the odds would be that he's favored to do it, for sure. Minus 200? Yeah, that's fair. Minus I feel like 240. that's a good one. He, he could really use, like, one more, like, 40 homer, like, yeah. 35 to 40 homer season. Maybe maybe this year. Yeah, he's got to get hot. But hopefully that's happening right now because the swings are kind of happening again. Um, okay, and that kind of wraps up. We, we have storylines. I, I, a few more big things to hit on here. It was a, um, it was a big, big week of, like, outside storylines that I've written down. But one more thing. I want to touch on, I don't think they made one today. I just want to double check, but going into today, at least let's see if they made one. No, they didn't. Okay. Going into today and through today, the Yankees have only made four errors in the field, which is the lowest in baseball. I think it's tied with two other teams. That is like what they aim to do. Obviously, you know, the, everything wanted with Rizzo was happening. Um, Donald to be that vocal leader. He's got to get, he's got to get more hits here, but th- those will come, but he's, you know, good with the clubhouse and chemistry, but they really wanted to, by trading Gary, by moving off from Glaber at short and getting a dependable guy like Falefa, who's really like coming to his own here. The defense is just next level. Like they're making plays in the field. They're not doing what the Orioles did today, where they made five errors and blew the game that way. Like they are winning games in the field rather than losing them. And it's so nice to see. You don't really have to worry behind the plate when Trevino's back there or Higgy. I know JMO had like that one inning where he's spiking every pitch. Um, that wasn't really on Higgy's fault. Um, it's nice when, like, a play at home, you have to worry about the guy having to tag the guy or, you know, a, a fly ball behind the plate, Higgy tracking it down rather than Gary just slipping and falling. It is so nice the transition they made from, like, being an absolute atrocity in the field to being elite in the field. And it's showing 13 and six, 10 and three at home, six game winning streak. It's, it, yeah, and- it's not the whole reason, but it's, it's a definitely plays a part of it. It's also a huge reason the pitcher is like ERAs are so low is that, Mm -hmm. you know, it it factors into that. And it's weird because it doesn't feel like they change that much. Like, I mean, shortstop and catcher are big, but, you know, it's not like they changed all nine positions. Donaldson at third, but like Gio was was great at third. Anyway, Rizzo, I guess, full time over Voight is an upgrade. Yeah, that dude, that's huge. He's also not only there last year, though. What? He was there last year at the end of the year. Toward, yeah, the second half. Yeah. Like, but again, the COVID, you don't know how much COVID was actually impacting because he because he really wasn't like <clears throat> that blowing a blowing away good defensively, I feel like last year. He was kind of just average, which is still better than Voight. But a really good Rizzo at first helps save bad throws that are coming in from anywhere. Um, he also makes those plays like the double play the other day where he, you know, just the smart play, step on first, immediately get the guy in the rundown. Um there was a really good play. There was a rundown yesterday, a pickoff play. Glaber threw it like in the dirt. DJ scooped it, no problem. Saved the play, got the out. Those things, the little things there, those are winning plays. They're making them. Nice to see. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, that's 
fundamentals like that was like i feel like last year or the year before we were harping like this team has no fundamentals like yeah base running off the top of my head i feel like has been fine this year yeah hicks had that terrible one he got thrown out to like start the game but yeah yeah in Baltimore. um, but la castro has been great on the basis he did get thrown out today but which was just stunning i didn't i didn't see that coming but um, but he also scored from first on the double by Marwin. Um, he had another steal later in the you know, game. Base like three times, two or three. Times, I think like right? four times actually, if you count the yeah. error. He had, he had himself a game. Yeah. Um. He's he he did have you know what earlier in the game though. He was loosening some balls in center field. It was weird the way that game started. Like he the whether well, was the wind taking it. He had bad jumps. He was freezing. It was a little a little weird out there in center. A little wonky, but. Whatever. They won the game. Not too worried about it. Uh, let's move on. We want to talk to you about our friends over at Roman. Baseball may be back, but it's not what you want to be thinking about while you're trying to last longer. And, bet Tommy, we're talking about sex. The folks at Roman, an online men's health Yeah, company, we are, brother. Hell yeah. They are changing the game with sex, with Roman swipes. The secret to longer lasting sex. Roman swipes are a clinically proven way to last longer in bed. They're effective, easy to use, and fast acting, and don't require a prescription. Roman can ship swipes to you in a discreet, unmarked package, and each swipes packet is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. They're super easy to use. Just uh, take the swipes out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry, and you are good to go. Right now, go to getroman.com slash ports to get your first month of swipes for just 10 to get $10 off when you choose a monthly plan, that's go to that you go to getroman.com slash porch. Um, and you choose your first month, you're gonna get oh getroman.com slash porch. You get your first month of swipes to, to get ten dollars off when you choose a month. They switched that up from the previous ones, and it is screwing with my brain because I'm used to saying another one there. Getroman.com slash porch to get your first month of swipes. You get ten dollars off when you choose a monthly plan. There we go. We landed the plane, we got there. Um, we love Roman. If you're having sex out there, use Roman. Um, okay, the letter, the infamous letter, Tommy. The letter, everyone was like, "Oh, the oh, Yankees!" No, the letter that's going to destroy the Yankees franchise. Oh my God, they will never recover. They're just like the Astros. They did the same thing. No, not even fucking close. Not even remotely close. And we knew this too. And people were like, "No, that Ryan Spader guy out there was like, no, look, apologize to me. I was right this whole time. Judge cheated. He didn't deserve to have his MVP season. They were using the cameras. Blah blah blah. None of that fucking shit happened. The letter showed that in 2015 and 2016. They were using the replay room like seemingly every other team was because it wasn't being enforced. Uh, and then they were really relaying that to second. And that was coming back to the hitter here and there. That, like, okay, yeah, like around the rules, sure. But if you, it's pretty much understood that if you were relaying signs to second around that time, like everyone was kind of doing that. Like that's literally status quo for the most part. What the Astros did that took it a step further was not only when Manfred came uh, down and everyone was like, hey, we got to stop this in 2017. They said they basically ignored that. They burnt that letter in front of like the whole team, essentially. Like, we're not going to follow this. And they were relaying signs directly to the hitter at the plate with nobody on second base. That's where it gets really fucked up. Because for the longest time in baseball, relaying signs in some manner to second base has always been like, a th- like if you're giving away the signs and the like the runner at second can see it or whatever, he's relaying it back to the hitter. That's just like been a part of the game for so long. When you're doing when there's no one at second, that's where it gets fucked up. Yeah, the Yankees you have a didn't do that. Camera in center field, yeah. like doing like that. The Yankees to think that a, an organization with as much history, as much class, and as much professionalism as the New York Yankees would ever cheat the game of baseball, it's disgusting. I said I think the Yankees should get reparations. I think that we should maybe get Mike Trout for free. Um, maybe Fernando Tatis Jr. when he gets healthy, Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani, I won't ask. That would be unfair to get a hitter and a pitcher in one. That would be unfair. So I, I take just, Hater if they want to give him. Give him. I story. take Josh. I think we need a little more than Hater, a little more than a reliever. But Do you know what he's. Yeah. You know what he's done to start the year. Uh, he has ten no, saves like, already with zero runs allowed. What's his like? How many strikeouts does he have? Fifteen and nine and a third. He's really good. Ten saves. That, that's lot. like a, a classic. Like, I feel like the Yankees not as much. Um, maybe last year or this year because the Brewers are good. But I feel like the Yankees were 
rumored for Josh Hader trade talks, like just perennial, perennial. Yeah, and I don't know if they had anything like any substance to them, but like right, like, it was just. Like, I think it was just like, like fans be like, we should go get that guy. He's really good. Yeah, like you see, he strikes everyone. He's really dominant. Um, no, um, the letter ended up being nothing. People are really just disappointed. I'm sure Red Sox fans, Astros fans, Mets fans really wanted it to be something. It was kind of out there that it wasn't going to be something. And the judge even said, like, hey, guys, like, all this information is out there. Like, it does make you think, though, why, like, Randy Levine fought so hard. To, the, the only reason I thought, like, maybe something's up here is because they fought so hard to keep it under wraps right. and unsealed. And it's like, it seems like it really was just about legal precedent. So, it's like, so the Yankees weird. were kind of looking out for everybody else in the future. Yeah. Like, You're welcome, yeah. baseball. Like, Randy Levine was looking out for everybody else. That's the whole excuse me, the only logical explanation. Or, like, they thought that if they make it such a big deal that it'll look like a letdown in, in comparison to what – but I feel like no matter what, anyone with a brain was going to see that this was a letdown. Yeah, completely. So, glad we can move on from it. No longer um, the cloud above our heads, we move on. Um, quick update to the Guardian situation with Miles Straw. That other angle came out, kind of vindicating. I feel like those fans around there and kind of vindicating the, what that guy was telling me, um, who was like his buddies were like the ones doing it. And he said, like they said, Straw said, hit me, bro. They actually said, hit me, motherfucker. Um, and for the most part, and now I think like, you shouldn't say like stay down Quan. I think that was one thing that was hurt. But that is so but, like minor that can't cause you to jump into the stance. <laughs> That's that that video to me is just like all right, Miles Straw is a pussy. Like he wants yeah. to say the Yankees are the worst uh fan base in sports. Like you're the softest player in sports. Like I get it, it's an injury, don't make fun of an injury, but like you know, I think people were thinking it was gonna be a racial remark or something yeah. like way over the line like that didn't hear any of that it was literally just like state like yeah i want to be chanting that but i mean that's pretty mild in the in the grand scheme of things you could hear in a ballpark so for miles straw to react like that fuck you miles straw yeah uh also the next day he went oh for four and then made that bad play in center field with a ball dropped on hicks's like bloop with the bases loaded that's not how you respond like the way you should respond is like going off that day and then you could talk right. shit after that's beautiful you know who did that Jacques Peterson had the fucking highlight of the week. I loved everything that happened with this. He's playing. I think they had a game in Milwaukee. Um, he's getting chirped at the plate. He steps out, like kind of stares down the heckler, hits a fucking two-run bomb to take the lead. As he circles around the bases, he's staring at the protester. When he crosses home plate, he goes up to the guy and he goes, do it again, pussy, and just goes back to his butt. Just fucking an all-time fantastic awesome. way of handling a heckler. Miles Straw, that's how you do it. Jacques Peterson's awesome. Love that guy. Yeah. That, uh, fuck, I had a point. I forgot what I was just going to say. Well. All right. I was something I was like, oh, it's going to be a good point, too. And I, I just fucking it escaped my mind. All right. Maybe we'll come back. Um, another thing here. Um, Garrett Cole pissed so well on Sunday that everyone thought he was cheating. And by everyone, I mean just loser Astros fans and just people who don't like the Yankees just – Thought this guy had no ability to pitch uh, good anymore. He needed to start. We'll see how he does against better teams. Um, but to think he was cheating and people not to understand that that is a combination of uh, the balls being rubbed with mud before the game. Uh, yeah, hey, when you pitch, it's fucking dirt. Uh, it's also a combination of rosin and sweat. And when you wipe it on your pants, your white pinstripe pants, there's going to be dirt there. That doesn't mean he's putting spider tack or some substance there to help him grip the baseball. All his RPMs and shit were on par with all of his starts this year. So, like, just the people actually thought that was a, a like him actually. And this, not to think also the umpire checks his hand after every half inning, and there's an umpire behind him watching the whole thing. You think they just allow him to open? And there's like, a camera like in center field showing his ass the whole game. And you it think like the Guardians so old to pull yeah, that off? Like, right. with, and, and you think the Guardians would just allow him to do this, like the whole game without saying a word? People are well, so like, fucking stupid. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. But to be fair, like this is a situation Garrett Cole has kind of put himself in where like it, it's going to be a storyline now. Like this one is ridiculous and absurd. But, you know, that, that it's just it's going to happen. Like this is going to be something that he has to deal with where I don't know about his whole career. I mean, 
but at least for like this year, like it's it, it just it's gonna be a storyline. Like he's just gonna have to learn to like tune it out. I hope Elon Musk, when he officially takes over, he just kicks all the people out that falsely accuse Cole of cheating there. Yeah, I like that. I feel like that should be number one on his on his doc. I remember my I remember my point, by the way. I oh. don't know if you were gonna bring this up anyway. Maybe it's on your list, but you were talking about how cool Jock Peterson is. As cool as Jock Peterson is, is as lame as Pete Alonzo is. Pete He's Alonso such a nerd. He's the biggest fucking loser on the planet. He is such a tryhard. Like every time he opens his mouth, like, oh, I could have put people in the hospital out there. Oh, oh, oh who the fuck like, says that? <laughs> He like he like has the mind of like a, a nine year old. Like it'll be cool if I say these things. Like he he's so non self aware. It sickens me. He has no self awareness whatsoever. Um, I do think it was cool. He got hit by a car and kind of ate it. But like, yeah, that, I don't get that quote. Like the Mets are just crying about everything this year. Seemingly they're in the middle of everything. They were head humping. The people want to say they didn't hit Nolan Arenado. That was dirty. That was filthy. They could have, they could have, they could have fucking, you know, gave him a concussion or something or could have broke his orbital bone. That's garbage. They had orbital right. bones. We're talking orbital yeah, bones. Yeah, we're talking orbital bones or whatever the hell. Try and say that three times fast, but that's not an easy I thing. think I said it wrong even once. Orbital. Orbital, orbital bones. bones. Orbital bones. That's orbital bones. Wrong. Right, that's kinda. definitely wrong. Orbitable is definitely, it's got to be wrong. Or, or, orbital? Noah, any idea? Orbital? Orbital bones? Orbital. Is it like orbit? A-L? Orbital. Orbital. Oh. Not, it's not yeah, orbitable. Right. It's orbit A-L. Orbital. Orbital, orbital bones. bones. I orbital think I was orbital bones. Orbital bones. That's so hard. Orbital. Orbital bone. <sighs> anyway. That's not easy. No, I don't know. I could have broke his orbital bone. Um, last thing I had on here. I think I said um, it. Kind of the athletic kind of exposed baseball for deadening the baseballs again and ruining offense and home runs. And this continually brings up um, – one second. Too loud. Um, this continually brings up my favorite scandal that got swept under the rug for no reason, the two baseball things. That's, there was just two baseballs in Major League Baseball in 2021. One was a rocket ball that you could hit out with the fucking check swing. The other one, if you put – 130 mile an hour exit velocity on it, it would get caught at the warning track. And now we're using that baseball apparently. Um, yet, like, there are pitchers, like Tyone has said that, like, he, you know, Chris Bassett was the one who really cried about it, but Tyone was saying, like, when he's thrown the ball in practice or whatever, he's felt like, wow, this is a smaller, lighter baseball or something like that. In the game, he said he hasn't had that issue, but there are other pitchers out there. So the baseball is changing from the exterior. And then you're finding out that, like, the exit velocity has never been higher with contact, but like balls aren't traveling as far and offense is down. Home runs are down. Now don't tell the Yankees that because they're just putting up fucking 10 runs a game at this point. Um, but it's, it's fucked up that Manfred just changes the balls every year. It's just really fucked up. It's absurd. Like it, it, it doesn't really get enough attention how crazy it is. Like it's just changing such a big thing about the sport. Like, Every game or every season is di- like uh, records are going to be different. Uh, it, it pick a ball. They have to pick a ball. Make it a, an in between of the of the or what or just I don't know. Make it whatever the ball was ten years ago. Like make it an in between of the lively ball, the dead end ball. Figure figure it out. Like we can't we can't just be going back and forth where you got pitchers you know talking about it. Hitters probably don't love it if it's dead. Like just. Pick a fucking baseball and stick with it forever. Yeah, and and the fact that, like, the fact that they would, when the juice balls were happening for the postseason, they basically put in the non-juice balls. Like, do you just change it for the postseason? Like, how does that allow? Like, what do we do? And then if you want to really break down, like, if if they really wanted to fuck things up, and they may have, we have no idea because no one fails to investigate. No one, No one chooses to investigate this, but, like, Let's say the Red Sox are down three runs in the ninth inning and Chapman's pitching and they want the Red Sox to come back. They bring in the rocket balls. All, all of a sudden, Chapman blows the save. It's like that can easily As they look, happen. Baseball hates the Yankees. Yeah, that and like, you know, with all these gambling companies in bed with baseball, a lot of shady shit to come down there. That's where we bring in the old word racketeering. 
that's where Manfred goes to jail for the rest of his life. Um, no, but uh, it, it is funny in the athletic article. It, it, I think Eno Saris was the guy who wrote it, and he was seemingly saying, like, baseball is trying to eliminate the three true outcome players. Imagine being Joey Gallo and reading that and be like, hey, dude, everything you've built your entire career upon is trying to be phased out of the game. I mean, but how is that eliminating the three true outcome players? Because it's going to force people to make more solid, like, more line drive, con- more like aim for base hits, essentially, instead of just swinging for the fences home runs because the balls aren't traveling far anymore. So it's going to, what they're trying to do is bring more contact back to the game, put more balls in play and seemingly like create more excitement that way, rather than like the boring three true outcome of home run swing. Yeah, well, walk. you know what? In that case, let's go Rob Manfred. I kind of, I kind of like, I kind of like that idea. But like, can you but imagine like, Joey Gallo like, understanding that. like you're just getting phased out? Adapt, adapt or die. That's right. And he said he wouldn't adapt. Yeah. Might have to. Um, but in that case, like DJ LeMahieu, Connor Falefa, Rizzo, good guys to have. Yeah. Judge all, even. All like aboard. He, but yeah, he, it is so yeah. fucked up how, how often they change the, uh, the balls and whatever. Um, so now the Yankees 13 and six, first place, sole possession. The Sox into losing that game. They did. It's a damn shame. Boston eight and 12. Shucks. Um, Blue Jays still there, 13-7. and seven. That's going to be a fun series coming up here. The Yankees have the Royals this weekend uh, in Kansas City. Um, Win two out of three. I'll, you know, you want to sweep, but, like, the fact that they just have swept the uh, the Guardians and the Orioles, yeah. like, you can afford to only win two out of three. But Friday night, Friday night, Nestor Cortez, not a bad way to spend your Friday night. The only problem, Thomas, this is an Apple TV game. Oh, damn. Only on Apple TV? Only on Apple Apple TV. Baseball's so stupid. It's crazy. It's so fucking stupid. It's absurd. So, Nestor Cortez, they're hiding him behind Apple TV. Horrible. Versus Chris with a K, Bubik. I feel like we should win that game. Saturday, Garrett Cole against Carlos Hernandez. Sunday, Severino against Daniel Lynch. Let's win this fucking series. Yeah. Let's win, win this three. series. You're 15 and seven heading into the Toronto series. Good. Let's do that. Dare that I seems- say 16 and six? 16 and six sounds incredible. 16 and six sounds crazy, especially like after that stretch of, you know, losing that Baltimore series, not finishing off the sweep of Detroit. But I'm man, when you look at winning eight of nine against these shitty teams, is exactly what you need to do. It's beautiful. Um, that's what good baseball teams do they can they do they consistently beat up on shitty teams they didn't do that last year they're doing it this year yep and then we um in other sports news nfl draft tonight exciting uh i feel like for me and you specifically um and jets fans i feel like we're the three yeah. like teams everyone's looking at for what they're going to do um we all Probably have to be a little outdated but well this is going to come out thursday night right yeah maybe the well, video I'm- version the video version of this is probably going to come out Friday. So what probably, time does the draft start tonight? I think it's 8 30. That late? I thought it was seven. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. And then I looked it up. Let's see what um are you part of the draft show? No, I'm not doing the draft. What? Okay. Oh no, Blatman said we're live tonight at eight. So maybe it is at eight. But I feel like they delay that pick to late 15 or something. Oh, all right, first. cool. So I got some time to yeah. So uh, um I want yeah. so Giants pick five and seven. It feels I honestly I just feel great. Like it feels so good to have a competent uh GM and like not a GM that's just writing guys down in his notepad. Uh I want best offensive line. I want an offensive lineman, need an offensive lineman. Like I'm tired of having a shit one every year, and best defensive player available. Evan Neal, Sauce Gardner, Ikum Akukti, whatever the fuck his name is, and and Kayvon Thibodeau. <laughs> I don't stingly some combination of that. And I'm also fine if they trade back if the value's right, but I feel like it's going to be hard um, because of like how many people want to trade back. You guys didn't pick up Daniel Jones's option. I mean, that was a no brainer. Yeah. He has a good what, year, you know, I, I think he Malik might have Willis? a good year, but he hasn't earned that. What? What if you take Malik Willis? I, I wouldn't hate it. I, I, uh, I feel like you should wait till that. You tank one more year. Next year's class that's is I'd so like good. I'd, I'd like to tank again and then try for Stroud or Bryce Young. But that's that's the draft to do it for. There's something about Malik Willis that doesn't. It's like 
I, I feel like he could be a special guy. Like you got two first round picks. I, I, I think it wouldn't be a great move because they have so many holes to fill where it's like, I don't want to take it on a quarterback. You're not even in love with, uh, I'd rather build up the rest of the team and then get a quarterback, but there's something about him that, that doesn't treat me. I was, I don't know why I was talking with my buddy today about the, just the, how bad Gettleman was like the fact that you have no cap is insane because you have no good players. And it's like, where is all your money tied up to? And it's like, it's, it's fucking, it's, it's truly one of the more, I think it might be the it's worst. It's almost impossible. I think it might be the worst GM tenure in the history of professional sports. And that's not, yeah, true. but you got good guys. So like, uh, is yeah. it shown? Is Shane, that how you pronounce Shane. his name? Shane. It's confusing. Shane. Okay. Yeah. He's Shane good. Train. And obviously, yeah, you're, you're, but you're like three years away from like anywhere doing yeah, anything. But at least but you like got to just pull it up. Hey, but like you gentlemen, top 10 helps. you were in a hole and that hole was just getting deeper. Now at least we're climbing out of the hole. Yeah, sure. Um, and then me, I don't, we're we'll probably draft the quarterback. <laughs> no you have does. two picks, right? Two picks, 22 and 28. I would love two receivers. I would do anything for Jamison Williams. They'd have to trade up for him. Um, I, it, they got, so, they have four picks in the top 60. Two of those have to be receivers because right now the, the depth chart is Alan Lazard and Sammy Watkins. So that's not good. So that's got to change. Um, I still can't believe that Devontae Adams is not on the Packers. It kind of doesn't really make sense. Um, but yeah, that's it. So uh, if you if you're listening to this in time, tune into the NFL dra- uh, the draft show we have uh, going on. Um, you can find it, I think on every platform for Barstool. Um, I'll be a part of it for the picks for the Packers. Um, and if not, then uh, we'll see you back here for Pinstripes. Um, I the recording might be weird. This might be a Monday morning drop. Just warning you ahead of time, guys, because Marty's traveling for Barcelona America, and you've got something too on Sunday, right? Yeah, I'm away. But you think you can do it Monday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah, but we we'll get an episode. Don't freak out. You'll have something before the Toronto series. It just might be Monday morning, and we'll we'll make it work. But you'll hear from us again, of course. That's short porch. We'll see you back here next time. Later.